Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock in for Ellen Hudson with my Color All the Things episode for this month. And I'm calling this card Santa Up in the Air because I'm using the new Up in the Air stamp set with a blended ink background. I don't do that very often. And then I'm also going to use the Tis the Season sentiment set so I can make it a Christmas card. I am short on Christmas cards, so I wanted to use that. And then the City Die. And I'm going to use a ton of inks. I don't usually use a ton of inks, so I actually took a picture of it. Look how many inks I used. It's kind of crazy. Usually I just use more colors of other things, not just stamping inks. So I started with my Misty, and I set it up so that I could get the sign that goes on the dirigible and to the clouds in the front, and then mask them out with some Eclipse tape and trim those suckers out. And then I set up the dirigible itself put it right over top of that. And then when I inked it with Lawn Fawn Jet Black, which is what I'm using for all of this on letterpress paper, I wiped off the insides of it because I didn't want those lines on it. And if you're stamping on patterned paper with this, it might be nice to do that as well and not have these big lines across it. You could do something a little more elegant with it perhaps. So then added a mask on for that as well and put it onto my Craft Assistant, which is my very favorite thing to do inking messy things on. Got some Distressed Oxide ink, the Chip Sapphire is the blue color I'll be using. And I have a baby wipe on the right hand side. This is a little trick that I learned by accident because I was trying to clean off one of my blending brushes and suddenly realized that a little moisture from a baby wipe was enough to get the blending to work much, much better. It was much harder to do when I was just going straight from the ink pad onto the paper. But as soon as I moistened it just a little bit, and you can just keep the baby wipe there and moisten it periodically as you're doing your inking. Now this is looking rather blotchy because I'm a terrible inker. That's not my gift. So I did take a couple of times going round and round the bend in order to try to get it to look smooth. It's going to look a lot better when you see it on a light background. I think my camera pulls tricks on me when it films things with a dark background. But I'm gonna, gonna add a little bit of black soot to it as well. And then I decided to try some candied apple in there. I'm gonna have a red dirigible and I wanted a little red in the sky to match with it and just pull a little bit more of that color elsewhere onto the card. And then I didn't like quite so much of it, so I dulled it down by putting in a little bit more of the chipped sapphire. Just blended that nicely, and I've got a really nice background for it. And I pulled out a couple of Copic markers, not a ton needed for this. As usual, my masking had a little bit of perfection that it was short of, so I ended up using a B37 to just go around a few edges and clean up a little bit of that whether it was cutting my mask weirdly or just placing it weirdly, you know, stuff happens. And then I decided I would color the dirigible and make it red so I could turn this into a Christmas card. As I said, I have a lot of Christmas cards to make and I have not finished them all yet. So I thought I'm going to turn this one into a Christmas card, even though it's a great stamp for other times of year. It's more of a general type of thing. And I'm going to, Add my own dimension to this with a couple different colors, the R89 for a dark. I'm just kind of making my own, um, I, I guess you'd call them pucker lines on the right and the left, or the front and the back of the dirigible, which makes it look kind of like it has a little bit of dimension to it. And then I'm going to add a little bit onto the tail as well, just a tiny bit. But notice I'm leaving a little lip on the bottom that's lighter. And then when I go in with my mid-tone color, I'm basically going to go over all of this area and go over that little highlight at the bottom as well. It almost looks like there's going to be a little bit of light hitting the bottom of it from below because it's flying over a city. So there might be some light on that. And just use that mid-tone color to blend things out a little bit and pull that sucker together. On this kind of a card, I'm going to do a lot of snow on it, and I don't really worry about being perfect with coloring, but I'm going to put a lot of snow on it because usually that's really distracting to people when they're looking at a card and it's got white, white snow everywhere. So it saves me a lot of worrying about perfect types of things. To do the clouds, I can take all that leftover color that was on my brush, just tap a little bit of it onto the cloud itself, and I've got a super soft little 
little cloud shadow. Now I've die cut out of a scrap piece of paper the city die and I thought I would use some of that black soot to make a little city down below so Santa's flying the dirigible over top of the city on his way to deliver presents and what I realized is that black soot is not really blackish. I mean it's blackish. It's it's more ish than black. So I decided to try seeing if I could use the blending brush with my Versafine Onyx Black. And guess what? That worked. I did make sure that I cleaned the brush right away because I'm even though I know I can wait a little while to wash out my brush in the sink after using distress oxide inks, I wasn't sure how long the brush would survive if it I got this onyx ink on it so I decided to wash it right away and it came out everything was fine so there we go nice little city down below and if you didn't want to add snow to it you could just add some sparkle and windows and stuff to the city which would be kind of fun or you could even die cut it and add a die cut on instead of inking it then the tis the season I only stamped the tis on the sign and then the season put in the center portion there. I used a little sticky note to block that off so I don't end up getting a second tiz. And then use the powder deactivator tool and it keeps any of the embossing powder from sticking anywhere else other than where the sticky ink is because the sticky ink is the Versamark clear ink. And then I can dump all of my embossing powder on that tap off the rest, heat set it, and my sentiment is ready to go. Got out, of course, the white pen, the trusty white pen that in my hands makes it snow all winter long, all over cards. And I have gone through many, many white pens this year already, and I'm not even done with my Christmas cards yet. The one thing I was missing, I wanted to put a little something on the front, and then for some reason, I didn't end up inking the little propeller on the back so I put a propeller in white pen on the front and the back just by drawing it on there and then drew on the little strings to hold the sign on the dirigible. There is a stamp for that in the stamp set, but I just drew it on because I forgot till the very end. So there you go. There is my card for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. All the supplies are listed down below. More stuff over on the blog, and I will see you guys again next month. Take care. Bye-bye.